What's up, everybody? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. For this Tuesday, September 26, 2023, I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here today. I know, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me, and I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my good friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, we have an action-packed show once again for you, my friends. But before I start the show, I always love to state my intentions. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transitions. That's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. And I'm so glad you guys made it today. You made it. You made it. You're in the right place. You are where you're supposed to be here on Transition Tuesdays, checking me out each and every Tuesday. And because of that, and because of that, I got to give you some soul claps. Got to do it. Got to do it for you guys. Got to give you some soul claps. I got to do it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Transition Army, for tuning in. I know your busy schedules. I know it. Hey, I love it. And I love that you guys came to tune in to check out the show today. So thank you. I thank you. Had to give you a soul clap. Had to give you a soul clap. <laughs> so let's do this while we have people checking in. I'm sure people are going to be checking in. Hey, want to recap. I want to do a couple of things today and on, on our transitional journey today. Want to talk a little bit about, man, Coach Primetime Effect. Just a recap of it, what took place last week, you know, and all and all what the Coast Prime Effect is all about, man. So, you know, uh, University of Colorado, who Coast Prime, Deion Sanders coaches, they lost to, uh, I believe Oregon was the number five team, and they played like the number one team that game, huh? They, man, they really blitzed Colorado. Colorado never really had a chance at all, never really had a chance in the game at all. Sador Sanders was sacked seven times, seven times. The offensive line was just that, very offensive. Man, they couldn't block anybody. Couldn't block anybody. Man, uh, they didn't look good. Defensive line looked good as well, too, but offensive line was very offensive. Man, you know, I, I, I love the quote by Coach Prime, you know, and I, and I really believed it. I really believe what he said, too. He said, hey, man, you better beat us now. You better beat us now, guys. You better beat us now. So, you know, again, they took a hard one. They took a L. They took a big L. And I like the words the coach, the, the coach from Oregon, you know, uh, before the game started, ESPN, you know, looks like they were there and they, they were taping his speech. And he says, you know, we played for clicks while they played for, while they, meaning Oregon, played for wins. And I think that galvanized that team. They was ready to play from the jump. I mean, it was no question about the outcome of the game early and often. So they just did their thing, man. So next up for Colorado, next up for Colorado is the number five. I think they either four or five, University of Southern California, USC. The Trojans, man, who they're coming about the guy, um, Caleb Williams, great last name. He is the um, reigning Heisman Award winner. I'm sure he's going to be, you know, jacked up to go against Sador Sanders, who people are saying he's up for the Heisman again this year. Uh, the guy Williams, Caleb Williams, is going to try to be the first, well, the second player to win back-to-back -back, uh, Heisman trophies since the great Archie, Archie Griffith did that for OSU. You know, so he's going to try to do that. So it should be pandemonium there in Colorado. That's a home game. I'm sure everybody's going to be there. On the sideline, supporting the Buffalo, supporting Coach Prime, supporting everybody. Um, Hunter, the two-way player is out again. This is going to be a second game. It's going to be out. Uh, hopefully, he can come back soon. I mean, he, he makes a world of difference, I believe. But again, I think. And, and speaking of, uh, you know, Southern Cal, I don't know if you got. Have you guys been watching this show? It is what it is with Cameron rappers Cameron and Mace. Oh, my God. You guys got to see this show. Oh, man. I, I'm promoting it because I love it. I, I can't get enough of it, man. Especially, speaking of um, USC, they have a regular guest, which is O.J. Simpson. He breaks down, you know, he's from, oh, you know, you um, he won a Heisman Award at uh, on, um, University of Southern Cal. 
But he does every Tuesday. He breaks down the NFL and college too. Man, but it is a must. I recommend you guys check that show. It is what it is with Mason and Cameron. Oh, my God. It's a great show. Great show. But uh, just getting back to, to Colorado this week. They got a tough one coming up. And I think, personally, they're going to make the adjustments. They're going to have a little bit of home cooking. And I think they are going to upset. You heard it here first on Transition Tuesdays. They are going to upset the USC Trojans. They're going to upset them. And they're going to get back into the top 25. They Right now, they're out of the top 25 because of that that loss, which was a lopsided loss. Maybe that's the reason why they're out of the top 25. But I think when they win this game, I believe when they win this game, like, the, like Coach Prime says, do you believe? We believe. I believe. I'm still on the bandwagon for Colorado and Coach Prime and the whole crew there. I believe they will get back on the hill, the hill again. And they will win, and they will upset the USC Trojans. You heard it here first on Transition Tuesdays. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, man, just yeah, just you know, the prime time effect, the coast prime effect is still in effect. Again, selling all those glasses, all those all those sunglasses. The guys on every commercial from Aflac to KFC with the wings and everything like this. Hey. The coach prime effect is still in E F F E C T. And it's not going anywhere. It's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. A little setback, but they'll be back. They will be back. Mark it here. You heard it here first on Transition Tuesdays. <laughs> now, here's what I want to do. I want to have a run of recap on HBO's winning time. Now, remember when I talked about this show being canceled for only two seasons. I'm going to go a little recap on that. Again, I was really distraught. Again, uh, I don't think the series should have ended that way. Uh, I see now the writer's strike. They're about to get back on board coming up. So I'm hoping, I'm just hoping and praying, man. We got to make this right, ladies and gentlemen. We got to make this right with the when HBO's winning time. It can't end the way it did. You know, it really can't. And uh, But I was doing some research on the show. And I want to read this article, man, which which was very interesting. You know, I pulled this up. Very interesting about the cancellation of the show and what it was all about, right? So fans of the prestigious of uh, fans of man, fans of this show have been very disappointed about HBO's um cancellation of winning time. But the Los Angeles Laker legend, Magic Johnson, who, if you guys haven't seen the show, it's really based on the dynasty of the Lakers, but the the central characters is, um, one is the major character is about um, Magic Johnson, right? So, uh, Magic Johnson, L.A. legend, Larry Johnson, Larry Johnson, Jesus, <laughs> Magic Johnson wasn't among them, okay? The five-time NBA champ, whose years as the face of the Showtime era Lakers, and a little tidbit, they wanted to sh- they wanted to call the show um, the Showtime Lakers, but again, you know, it was done by HBO, kind of like a little conflict of in- interest, you know what I mean? Because there is a Showtime, you know, a streaming service, so they didn't want to call it that. So that's a little tidbit um, about that. But um, it talks about, yeah, it talks about how Magic uh, recently told a reporter, he said, um, that he never watched the show. He's never watched the show before, which I was really astounded by that. I'm really surprised by that. He says, because nobody in this world can tell the Lakers story. This is what he says. He says, nobody can tell the Lakers story. We have on the check-in, we got Felicia checking in from The Rock. What's going on, Felicia? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you. Okay? All right. So, let me continue. He added, Magic added, the Showtime story? Nobody. He says, Dr. Jerry Buss, who was ahead of his time as an owner, our team? Unbelievable. The Laker girls with Paul Abdul? Unbelievable. Nobody can tell that story. Magic Johnson went on to say that his former teammates and associates also 
have not seen the show. I am shocked to hear this. They are not seeing the show. It's kind of like a, seems like they're staging a boycott on there. Have not seen the show, which ran for two seasons. Um, he, Magic goes on to say, none of us watched it because it was fictional. It was fictional. And that's a good point by Magic because what they always do at the end of the show, they have a little disclaimer. Events and currents were totally, totally fictional. Okay, so they tell you that ahead of time. So Magic says, watching the show because it was fictional. You just can't tell that story. But hey, that's on them. Okay, that's what Magic said. Also, Magic went on to say as well, Magic goes on to say, um, who played for the Lakers from 1979 and, and to 1991, and again in 1996, previously criticized the show. He says, how are you going to do it? You can't do it, he says. So I don't know what the stuff winning time is all about. I haven't watched it. I'm not going to watch it. Man, this is very indicting. And all the guys say the same thing. Kareem, Abdul-Jabbar, everybody. You can't do it. You can't do it. So this is what this is what he's saying. He just said you can't do it. You, you, you can't have you can't have the show. I mean, it's, it's a fictional account of the show. And I was just so surprised. I was really so surprised that Magic and his former teammates haven't even watched the show. I thought it's been a great show. I think it was a great show for two years. I think they could get more seasons out of it if they tell the story the right way. I mean, it was so many, so much meat on that bone was left, man, at the end of that, which which made it so disappointing. Which made it so disappointing. So, you know, I hope um, with this rider strike, and again, it's going to be coming out. It looks, looks like it's going to be ending shortly. Hopefully, they get back in the drawing board. And hopefully, if HBO can't pick it up, hey, oh, I'm going I'm to give people ideas already. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. this is what I do here on Transition Tuesdays. Why don't Showtime pick it up and call it the Showtime Lakers? Just saying. Just saying. That maybe, maybe Magic and crew could get involved with the process, and then it might be a better show, and then it might lead to like three or four more seasons of it. Just saying. Because it can't end like that. It cannot end like that. Man, it cannot. We have on the check-in my guy, my former teammate, my former business mate. Man, my partner in crime and rhyme. We got my guy, Uncle Smoothie, on the check-in. What's going on, Smooth? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're just going to have to stay tuned with that. HBO's winning time. I recommend you check it out. See for yourself if you think it was a strong show. Again, didn't get the backing of the players of the show, but hey, I thought it was a good show, and I think we could get more seasons out of it too. But I guess we got to do it right. And in Magic's uh, view, and I know Jerry West was portrayed kind of, you know, crazy, which, you know, he, he didn't endorse it at all. So, again, maybe you get the right players involved with it. Then maybe we might have a continuation of winning time. You might see it on HP. You might see it on Showtime, though, where it should be maybe because of the word Showtime. Just saying, just giving out some suggestions. Just giving out some suggestions. <laughs> Just, just, just trying to spew some rhymes here. Just trying to spew some rhymes. And speaking of rhymes, speaking of rhymes, we got to talk about, guys, if you haven't seen it already or if you haven't heard it already, we got to talk about President Joe Biden. Uncle Joe blasted for calling rap goat LL Cool J, quote, unquote, boy. Man, have you guys heard about this? Have you heard this? Have you heard about this tape and stuff like this? Though, no, if you haven't, guess what? We have audio. Let me let you hear it. Okay? Hang tight. Listen up. Two of the great artists of our time representing the groundbreaking legacy of hip hop in America, LLJ Cool J. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that boy's got, he Ooh. got man's got biceps bigger oh. than my thighs. I think he's been. And MC Light. Both of you, thank you. Oh, man. All right. Now, you guys heard that. You heard it for yourself. Hey, I, I, okay, a couple of things. Um, well, let me just go. <laughs> what went on during that time, that audio that you heard, okay? So, President Biden is, is under fire for calling 
LL Cool J boy during a speech in the Congressional Black Caucus with everyone from average Americans scolding the president for that for the unacceptable comment about a black man. Okay? Now you heard the videotape about it. Now to to President Biden's credit, did you see how savvy this guy was? Okay, he mentioned the word boy, but again, he was able to transition into from boy to man really quick, almost before we even heard it. He did it that good, that well, that savvy, but, you know, he's catching a lot of heat, a lot of heat from a lot of players, you know, who were just saying, you know, man, this, you know, the word boy, the word boy, the term boy is considered a racial epithet when used to describe black men. Okay, that's what it is, man. If you guys remember all my, you know, people who were born in the 1900s, you ever watch the show Good Times with the militant, the militant Michael Evans, right? You remember what he said on one of those, on one of those series, on the episode, he says, oh, you know, uh, the boy, the, the term boy is a white racist word to describe black men, you know? So that's what he talked about. Again, Biden is getting a lot of heat, a lot of heat on that. So it had me wondering, man, and I, and I asked the question for everybody to ponder and, and possibly answer. Now, you heard the audio, okay? Now, was President Biden being a racist for his boy remark, or did he just misspeak? Was he being a racist in this, in this, in, in this particular situation? What do you guys think? Was he being a racist? We have on the check-in, Miss O.D. checking in from Lumber to North Carolina. What's going on, Miss O.D.? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, that's the question I have for you. Man, was President Uncle Joe, President Biden, was he being a racist by with his boy remarks? I mean, it's a shame that he butchered L. Cool J's name. I mean, from the beginning, right? Let me play that again, the beginning of it. Let's play the beginning of it. Because I want to see how he totally butchered it. Oh, my God. Let's see how he did that again. Let's play it again. Two of the great artists of our time representing the groundbreaking legacy of hip-hop in America, L.L.J. Cool J. Oh, my God. And even he knew it. He was like, oh, I botched, I botched this up. Oh, my God. So could it just been a little simple... You know, he wasn't reading the, the tell us, you know, teleprompter. Maybe he was going too fast or too slow. I don't know. Man. But, again, but is it, Biden a racist? Do you think he's a racist because of these comments? Or is he just being like, uh, hey, bottom line, is he just being old? <laughs> is he just being old and, you know, saying some old words like boy? You know, that boy has, you know, or did he clean up that boy? Or that, that man has some biceps. You know, it's bigger than my legs, man. You know? Man, so I don't know, man. It's <laughs> oh man, I, I you know, first off, I, I really feel bad for, for President Biden. Number one for butchering and butchering that. You know, number two for <laughs> for saying boy. But to his credit, I is able to weasel out that to, to switch it off to man, you know. But I, me personally, I don't think the guy's racist. I mean, come on, man. We, we might have to Man, you know, President <laughs> President Obama might have to check him on that one, maybe. Maybe he might have some dinner and talk about that. But I don't think he's personally racist. I think he just botched it up. And again, it was hard for him to recover when he botched up LL Cool J's name when he was reading it off the teleprompter. He totally botched that up. Then again, he then he <laughs> he botched up the boy comment. Yeah, I don't think the guy's totally racist. Not at all. I, I I don't think so. I I think he just bossed it up, man. We just we just had to see it. <laughs> Chris says Joe is like your grand your grandpa. That's true. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's like your whoa. Well, you know, hey. But you know, sometimes grandpops they they speak truth in what they say now. You know, <laughs> sometimes they speak truth. So was that Joe Biden's truth by calling him a boy? You know what I mean? Is, is that's how he gets down in the White House? I don't know. I doubt it. But you just never know, you know, you just never know, man. And again, we got to keep in mind that this, this is a grandfather of six or seven running the country. Don't, don't forget that too, okay? Joe Biden is 81 years old, right? 81. 
some people say the way he's, you know, the way, you know, he's, <laughs> the way his health is, some might say he's older than that. You know what I mean? So, and again, his approval rating is dropping daily because it, you know, not just this, but his approval rating is coming, you know, it's dropping by on by on day to day basis. People are saying, is he fit to run for the presidency of the United States? Is he, is he fit to run it back? Can Joe run it back? Can he run it back and win? Man, but I don't know. Does that comment make him a racist? For me personally, I'll take this first. I don't think so. I think he just misspoke. And again, he just got a little flabbergasted because he, at first, L. Cool J name, bunched that up. Then he gets into the boy comment, and then he switches over to man, you know, the whole nine. And then he tried to switch it up real quick about MC Light and stuff like that, the people who they're honoring, you know. It's all politics, you know, what have you. But I don't think the man's racist. He just he just misspoke. And, uh, again, that's just my opinion. What's your opinion on that, too? And I had another question for you guys. If the presidency, well, the general election was today. If the general election was today and if Biden had to go against number 45. Now, if you had to vote today, this day, September 26, on those two probable candidates... Which one would you choose? Which one would you choose? Okay. Now, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give you another exclusive on Transition Tuesday. I don't think Joe Biden is going to run for president. I think he's going to bow out. I think he's going to say, maybe health concerns, what have you. I don't think he's going to have to, I don't think he's going to run again. I don't think so. And I think he might say maybe, he might say a little earlier. That way we'll get a chance to get some candidates involved. Like who can be who can be the next president, you know, besides Biden? I think he's going to make that announcement. I think he's a little coy on it. I don't think that's what he's going to do. But again, if he was running today, if he was running today against number 45, who would you vote for? Okay, who would you vote for? I still say <laughs> I would still vote for Biden. Even with all his faults and everything, I would vote for Biden and not number 45. That's just me. What would you do? Okay? What would you do? <laughs> so while you guys are pondering that, I'm looking to see if anybody else is commenting. No more comments, it looks like. So, hey guys, if we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends... You have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory today. All right. Let's get to the theme music. If I could just pull it up here. Get back on my to my DJ skills. <laughs> Before we head on out here. Let's see. Let's play my theme music. Hey. Hey. All right. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for you being here each and every Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man, Um, I tell you, what was I going to say? <laughs> now, again, you can watch our show and our past shows on our YouTube channel, Transition Tuesdays, okay? When you go there, please make sure you like and subscribe, okay? Make sure you do that, okay? Shout out to our sponsor, Sweet Candy Cafe, okay? The home of Southern Sweetness located in downtown Lubberton, North Carolina. And let me turn this music down. Hold on a second. Let me turn this music down. Hold on a second. Because I got a tip for you guys. And I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to put you guys on the scoop here, okay? Now. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, this candy craze that's sweeping the nation, okay? Man, um, uh, it, it is really sweeping the nation. And here, I have a little sample of this. Freeze-dried Skittles, right? Now, here at Sweet Candy Cafe, get packages and everything, I have this. Now, again, these... Man, freeze-dried Skittles, or we like to say Felicia's freeze-dried favorites. I have this in my possession. And you can only find this at Sweet Candy Cafe. And what I'm going to do for you guys, 
I'm going to sample one for you guys, right? And I want you guys to hear the crunch of it. You just can't have one. You got to have two. This candy here is sweet from the nation. And you can, <clears throat> you can buy this candy at Sweet Candy Cafe. So I know we got Miss Felicia Evans Long on here. And again, let your taste buds do the talking for you. And you can go to SweetCandyCafe.com to order your confectionery goodies. And you can get this. This candy here is sweeping the nation. You can order it at SweetCandyCafe.com. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, transition on me. As we say in party, as Felicia says, yummy. Yes, it is yummy. Please go check that out. We got to support black businesses, okay? But as we say in party, happy transitioning. And we'll speak to you soon, guys. Take care. God bless.